problem statement. What are we trying to solve? Okay, we're all aware of the suspicions around electronic elections technology. You don't have to suspect that any elections have already been stolen to know that there's a problem. Voting machines are computers. They're just like any other computers, and we all know, well, Target knows, and eBay knows, and uh, Anthem knows, that you cannot keep computers entirely safe. Um, you know, and if Anthem and eBay can't do it, our county clerks and the voting machine manufacturers that make our machines can't do it either. We have to be on the lookout for miscounts. Now, not a person in this room can name a single other application of computer technology in either business or any other function of government where the managers and the executives or whoever's in charge make final irrevocable decisions based on computer output that no one has checked for accuracy. Elections are the only place it happens. Checking computer output for accuracy is a basic, prudent management technique that is universally and routinely used in every other application. And that's got to stop. Um, now, to deal with this problem, some people say, let's have hand-counted paper ballots and nothing but hand-counted paper ballots. And other people say, no, you know, Wisconsin's system right now is, you know, do a lot of pre-election security stuff, then seal the ballots in a bag and don't look at those ballots again unless and until in those very few cases when someone gets a recount because the race is so close. Now that second way, the way Wisconsin does it now, that's illegal in many states. There are many states in which you cannot certify election results if you haven't checked to make sure those machines counted correctly. The way Wisconsin does it now, no one endorses this. Not the Federal Elections Commission, not the Presidential Commission on Election Administration, not any of the national foundations and think tanks that uh, have to do with election administration. We just flat out do it wrong right now. So why do we do it this way? Why is Wisconsin so funny? Um, actually, we're not alone, unfortunately. There are many other states that don't verify, but there's many states that do. And Wisconsin needs to be one of them. Okay, uh, just a quick review for those of you that you know aren't familiar with how our elections work. In those counties that use voter marked paper ballots, which is Dane County, where we are right now, and fortunately most other counties still, the voters mark their paper ballots, they feed them into an optical scanner, the optical scanner computer counts them, and then at the end of the night, the election workers punch a button and a tape comes out of the machine, looks a lot like a cash register tape, and so it's pretty much the same function. You say, oh, these are the totals. Here it is. Then, then a process happens called the municipal canvas. In the municipal canvas, they make sure all their records are in order for that precinct or that municipality. They make sure that the machines counted the right number of ballots, not the right number of votes, the right number of ballots. They package it all up, make sure it's orderly and compiled, and they send it to the county. They have about a week to do that. The next process is called the county canvas, and the, clerk, the county clerk is in charge of that one. They have about another week to do it, and the county canvas is the one is the process that has to end with every member of the board of the board of canvas in the county and the county clerk signing a statement saying we verify that these results are correct and true. And then, if it's a state level result, they, the county sends it off to the state government accountability board. Now, the government accountability board, their job is to make sure they've got the results from all the counties, that they're all complete, before they certify the statewide election results. Now, GAB's authority does not include questioning whether the electronic tabulations that those totals are based on is true and accurate. They've got that that signed statement from the County Board of Canvas, it's not GAB's job to <coughs> count our votes right. Uh, the statutes look around and the statutes look straight at the County Clerk and the County Board of Canvas and say the buck stops here when it comes to counting our votes right. Mm -hmm. So the process we're describing tonight is one we hope the County Clerks will pick up and use during that County Canvas period, the two weeks following every election day. Okay, now the next question. Why haven't the county clerks adopted verification procedures? Now, I can tell you, there's, uh, there's a bunch of reasons, but there's two biggies. The first reason is that almost every county clerk 
has been burned or severely bruised by a recount. Recounts are awful for county clerks to go through. Um, you've got, um, you know, rabid partisans that are all, you know, fighting over every single ballot and breathing down your neck. If something goes wrong, they're likely to accuse the county clerk of incompetence at best or malfeasance in some way. County clerks, I mean, try this with your own county clerk. Talk to them and say, you know, have you ever unsealed a ballot bag? And, you know, no, no, I've never done it. They are scared, literally, of touching those paper ballots after election day unless and until someone demands a recount. And you can only get a recount if the election rates are this close. So they've, they've been scared. They've been hurt. They've been burned. They don't want to open the sealed ballot bag, so they don't verify the election results. The second reason clerks don't verify the election results is because of speed. The news media are the other people who are breathing down their neck, saying, fast, 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 get us the results. And um, when you couple that with county's tight budgets, it's kind of aversive for a county clerk to think about taking a few days, the Wednesday and Thursday following election, to stop, hire a few poll workers to come in for a few more days, maybe, to verify the results. They just don't want to do it, especially if citizens don't seem to be interested in it. So those are the two main reasons, I think, that county clerks haven't done this on their own yet. OK, so why are we, a citizens group, up here saying, we, we know, we know, <laughs> we've got a way to do it? Because the technology has moved on. Um, the new, newest kind of digital, uh, newest kind of optical scanner machines, where you take a paper ballot and you shove it through the machine, uh, the new way they work is that they create a digital image of every ballot, a, a photograph, if you will. At the moment, the voter feeds it through the machine. Um, again, there's very little time for anyone to tamper with that ballot. There's no time for them to tamper with that ballot. And the digital image gets created right away. Um, at the break, I, we can, uh, what we're going to do, yeah, after we do the first test, we can come back to why we think those digital images are trustable. I, again, they can be hacked, but it's very hard. We'll come back to that. Um, then those digital images are stored on a flash drive inside the voting machine. And then on election night, in, in Dane County at least, they're not electronically transmitted. The, that flash drive is pulled out of the voting machine. It's taken to the county clerk's office. It's shoved into a computer in the county clerk's office. And it's, um, where did it go? I was going to show it to you. Uh, here it is, <laughs> uh, in the county com computer, and then the county clerk can shove a blank flash drive in there, copy the ballots to this flash drive. This flash drive here has a digital image of every ballot that was cast in Dane County on February 17th primary. It's all stored here. Um, and they're open records, which is how, how and why the county clerk gave us this. Well, um, so what we did with this is we realized these digital images can solve both of those problems. If the county clerk uses these digital images to verify that the voting machines counted right, they won't have to touch those sealed ballots. Mm -hmm. They can work with this to see whether or not there's a problem that's worth, you know, something that indicates to them maybe you do need to do a full recount. They can check the, with, on this without touching the paper ballots. The second thing that solves is speed. Now, I, I don't know how many people in this room have participated in a hand count. It takes a long time. You have to move a lot of paper around and count a lot of paper, and, and you can't count one vote without moving the piece of paper. Uh, we're going to demonstrate this right now with the very first precinct, and you'll see how fast it is. Um, we believe that County Coach will be able to do this procedure um, within the couple days following every election. So let's go. First thing we're going to do is we're going to select some precincts randomly. Um, now, uh, I'll, I'll explain sampling and statistical, you know, again, after we're doing the first precinct. But OK, can you verify randomly? Just does this look like every word is there? I mean, I know some of the words are grouped, but I just want you to verify that there's a slip for every word where it looks like it. Doesn't yeah, it? Okay. <laughs> you want to say, yeah. I just, I mean, some of them are grouped, so it's hard. Yeah. Okay. 
there's, there's a slip for every ward. So this is going to be a random sample of all the precincts. So now I'm going to take the rubber band off. <laughs> OK, can you pick our first precinct? Just hang on a second. You prick our second. Okay. And can you pick our third? Okay. Uh, now let's let's see. Let's uh, let's try this one first. Let's see if it's a small one. I'd like to use this. Can, it is ward. Ward ten. Ward ten. Yeah. Ward ten was the first randomly selected ward. Can you check to see how many ballots are in there? I don't want to pick one of the 400. 179 yes. for yes. Soglin and 61 for Resnick, so. 230, 260, 270, about 30, 30. Yeah, okay. Less than 300 votes. Of, less than 300 ballots. ballots. Okay, let's go. Let's do that one first. Uh, can I, the other ones are? 69. 69 and? 23. 23. Okay, we'll do these 23 next. is a really small one. Yeah. Oh, okay. It's like 40 to 50 votes. And Let's start with 69. Ward 23. <laughs> <laughs> 69's a little bit. Okay, bigger. we'll do all of the randomly selected ones, but we'll do the small one first. Okay, the way this is going to work, this is how it works. Okay, Paul Lindquist has created the software that turns the ballot images into a slideshow without altering the images in any way. I mean, this is just exactly as the files came off the county clerk's computer. Um, we're going we to have, have two teams of official counters up here in front. When we did this Monday night, I was one of the counters. Does anyone else want to do it? It's fun. It's easy. Volunteer? OK, Keith. Keith is going <laughs> to volunteer to help count the votes. And so. Uh, well, if this was a real procedure in a real county clerk's verification process, these would probably be trusted, trained, or experienced poll workers. Again, it doesn't require a lot of training, but um, we're going to have two teams of two. We're going to verify the election results for uh, Paul Soglin, who won the primary, according to the voting machines, and Scott Resnick, who came in second and therefore got a place on the general election ballot. We're going to verify those two. There were three other people on the ballot. We're not going to verify their counts. We're just checking to see whether the voting machines got the right outcome, identified the right two people for the ballot. And for that, we don't need to count all their votes. These two are going to count votes for Resnick. These two are going to count votes for Soglin independently. They have these clickers. And as the ballots roll by, at a rate of one per second. They're, Julie's going to click every time she sees a vote for Soglin, and Sue's going to click every time she sees a vote for Resnick. You two, Keith and Gary. And then the slideshow automatically pauses after every 25 ballots. And these two are going to say loudly the number they each independently got. Julie has laryngitis, so you won't be able to hear her. <laughs> and these two are going to independently say how many votes they counted for Resnick, or yeah, Resnick. And um, you are going to be able to hear their, their, what they say they've got. Um, then if they agree, the total is going to be recorded on another sheet, you know, that total for that 25, and we'll move on. The slideshow will resume. If they disagree, if Julie got 10 and Gary got uh, 9, then all four of them, th then the 25, last 25 slides are going to be shown again, and all four of them are going to count for that candidate. And we're going to check to make sure that we got the right count for that batch of 25. And then we're going to move on. And sometimes we just count out loud at that point, because you can't count out loud for two different candidates. But when you're just counting one candidate, it's like. Yeah, let's try that. Let's try that. That, that was fun. La Monday night when we tried this out, we started getting silly. But in, in our silliness, we developed a procedure that I think works pretty well. Um, let me see. Oh, the other in important thing about a verification as opposed to a recount, if we had any ambiguously marked ballots, and there's always a few. There's always like, I, didn't, I think the researchers have shown you know five in a thousand or something. 
where um, it's unclear who the voter wanted. When we're doing verification, we don't need to resolve those. We'll just mark, note them down, and so when we compare the total, we'll say, oh, if it's off by one, we know what that vote was. We don't need to resolve those in a verification the way you need to resolve them in a recount. That's another thing that helps it go much faster. Um, and, okay, and again, the transparency of this process is something that we we're just so excited about. Everyone in this room is going to be decide which candidate you're going to count votes for. You can count in your head. You can use a tally sheet. You can use one of the clickers I gave you. You'll be able to check to make sure that these four are doing their job right. Okay. Uh, then again, when we get to the end of the precinct, we're going to add up the totals from each batch of 25. We're going to compare it to uh, the county clerk's website. And again, these totals are the official verified totals, but they are. I mean, the official certified totals, but they're not verified. This is what the voting machines reported, and I'll get to the detail in a second. Um, and we're going to compare it and see how they match. So let's go. Um, what is it? Uh, precinct 23. 23. 23. Uh, mayoral candidate uh, 23. Okay, are you ready for the slides? Are the counters ready? Is the audience ready? Let's see if the machine in Ward 23 counted right. So um, on this computer, this laptop, I've, I've got a copy of Karen's thumb drive that has all the uh, results. And you can see they're in folders on my computer here by the different groupings of wards, all the different polling places. Um, this is the screen of the uh, application we've built and it's got a toolbar across the top and we'll sort of go through what each of those do. Um, one of the things you can do is set the speed at which it will display the ballots and I'm suggesting we start out at one and a half seconds right. per. Uh, once everybody's got the hang of it we might ramp it up to one per second. You can clip through a lot of ballots once you've sort of got the the pace down. Um, so there is a an open button that allows you to go choose which polling place you're going to verify. We're going to do Ward 23 for Madison. A previous and next button would allows you to manually back up and forward and if you want to examine a uh, ballot more closely. There's a fit button. When you bring the ballots up you can click that and it will size the screen so you see the whole ballot. But as we're counting, I'll zoom in to the right. section of the ballot that's really most interesting so everybody can see that. There's a resume button, which will push every time we want to start or restart, resume, cycling through a batch of 25 ballots. A pause button if we need to stop and resolve a question. And a replay button for the situation where one counter says nine, the other one says ten. We'll replay that batch and go through those 25 ballots again. Uh, it will beep every time a new ballot is displayed. And so over in the corner here is a button if we want to mute the beep. But I like the beep, so we'll, we'll keep that on today. So clicking open, it brings up the um folder structure here and we're going after madison ward 23. so it's retrieving all the ballot images and it gives a little bit of instructions here and i'm sure we'll wordsmith as we get a little farther uh have done this enough now you made this up yeah this software yep if this was dane county and they wanted to verify what would they be using do you know well uh, obviously, we would offer them yep. this software. Um, I'm a Microsoft uh, developer, so this software was written to be run on a Windows 7 or 8 computer. Um, you know, it certainly could be ported to other platforms if we find that it's popular. But, um, you know, we just got the ballots a few weeks ago, and so this is, you're seeing, you know, the beta version of this. It'll, I'm sure it'll mature a little as we go through this. So we've got some instructions about explaining about the 25, encouraging you to uh, confirm up in the title here that, in fact, I have chosen the right ward, Ward 23. That's the one we're doing. Uh, explains a little bit about the, about the zooming and that you want to click the resume button. So here is the first ballot. And can everybody hear the ding? I can turn it up a little louder if you're loving the ding. 
On the left hand side is the front of the ballot, and on the left hand on the right hand side is the back of the ballot. And for this election, none of the ballots have anything on the back. So I'm gonna size the screen a little better so you see have more room to see the front of the ballot and less room for the back of the ballot because nobody really cares about that. And we're going to focus in here on this section of the ballot. Um, you know, you can zoom in and out. Um, so how's everybody feeling about that size? Everybody can see the... A little bigger would be nice. Slightly bigger? Okay. How's that? Okay. Can we move the podium? Oh, sure. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Everybody comfortable with where we're at? Mm -hmm. Can it be moved up that section? Be moved up, yeah. moved up a little like that? Right. Sure. Okay. So, at this point, you see the first ballot out of 47 in Ward 23, and we're going to look, we're going to cycle through at a one and a half seconds per ballot pace um, for the first 25, and then the counters will, will pause, the counters will confirm that they agree about the number of ballots uh, that were cast, votes cast for each of the candidates, and then we'll proceed on or we'll hit replay and redo the first 25 again. Um, you've already seen that Paul Soglin got the vote on ballot number one, so when I hit resume, it will uh, pause for a second and a half for you to really see that, and then it'll display ballot number two for a second. Here we go. Everybody's counter should be reset to zero, and, and if you're counting Soglin, you've got a vote of one. but uh, now that everybody's happy we'll close that and click resume everybody should have reset their counter back to zero because we're going to start counting this batch of 25 22 from zero 22 ballots. oh yes there's only 22 remaining oh, that's right. this will go quick website where they already posted the machine tabulated totals. <coughs> we'll see how much Sogland and Resnick got for uh, Ward 26. 23. 23. 23. 23. 24. Yep. Yeah. Resnick, Sogland, and... Or 12 and 24. Yep. Yeah. Right. So, the voting machine in Ward 23 counted correctly. 